My guest tonight has made an M for himself in print, radio, and television, but he's probably best known for more, authoring more than 30 books, including the classic Season on the Brink. Tonight I'm happy to be joined by John Feinstein. John, thanks for coming in. My pleasure. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year to you. John, uh, tell us a little bit. You've had a chance to see this VCU team a couple of times. What are your thoughts on them? Uh, conference play just kind of getting underway. You know, I think Shaka Smart is very pleased with the non-conference season because it did what he wanted to do. It kind of blooded them a little bit. They played a really tough schedule, the toughest schedule statistically um, in the country. They, they, they got their head handed to them a, a, a couple of times. Uh, but that's the way you get better. I mean, Shaka talks about the fool's gold of beating teams that aren't very good. There was no fool's gold in this schedule. I think the players know uh, what they have to do to get to the level they want to be at in March. They know what they face in the Atlantic 10. Uh, and uh, I, I think the, the league, the top half of the league is very balanced. There's nobody who's clearly better than, than everybody else. And uh, that, that's the kind of season I think Shaka was expecting when we started this in November. You have you know, paid attention to the Rams for quite a few years. When did they first come to your attention? J.D. Barnett, <laughs> uh, and in the 1980s. Uh, I remember being down at uh, the, the old Kentucky Invitational, and, and uh, VCU played in it that year, and I was actually down there to do a story on, on Kentucky, but uh, it, was, it was a really good team that made the NCAA tournament later that year, and of course, VCU has really been, you know, you talk about cradle of coaches, some of the uh, coaches who have come through here. Uh, Sonny Smith, arguably the most entertaining coach <laughs> that, that we've seen uh, around these parts. And uh, then, of course, Jeff Capel and Anthony Grant. And now Shaka, uh, just uh, Shaka's taken it to new levels. And it's been really fun to see, especially in this building, which is such a great place to watch a basketball game. Yeah, and you were a fixture at the CAA tournament every year. Yeah. Well, you know, what did you get out of that event, and, and why did you like coming back there every year? Well, I, I like the fact that it, that it was very underrated in terms of the teams, uh, and I think uh, George Mason kind of changed the perception of the CAA because that was a year when I think you could have easily had three bids uh, for the CAA, and George Mason ended up going to the Final Four. And then a couple of years ago, of course, the year VCU went to the, to, to the Final Four in 2011, um, Old Dominion was a tremendous basketball team right. and beat VCU in the, in, in the, in the championship game. Uh, so I always enjoyed the level of competition. Now, you've, you've seen uh, so many programs over the years, so many of the great coaches and, and that sort of thing. What is it that makes a program special that, that allows for a sustained success? I, I think it really does start with the coach, especially in basketball, because uh, he can, can put his stamp, his mark on the program, uh, both in recruiting and style of play, in terms of sustaining uh, what he's, he's built, whoever it might be. And, um, you know, you see there are very few jobs where you automatically you're going to win mm -hmm. if you don't have the right coach. I mean, look what happened in North Carolina when Matt Doherty was there. No offense to Matt Doherty, sure. but they went 8-22. and 22. <laughs> who, who could imagine North Carolina going 8-22? and 22? Inconceivable. And then, you know, we, we reach a point where you have the coach at VCU saying no thanks to UCLA. You have the coach at Butler saying no thanks to UCLA. I mean, that, that would have been unheard of 20 or 30 years ago, but Brad Stevens and Shaka Smart were both that good. Brad Stevens went from Butler to the Boston Celtics. Again, that would have been unthinkable. Sure. So uh, I really do think it, that, that it's the coach. And, and again, VCU's been very fortunate that uh, the ADs here, uh, most recently Norwood Teague, have done such a good job hiring coaches. It, it, you know, a guy, a, a colleague of mine that I, that I trust and, and really appreciate his word, um, you know, he talks about co coaches being essentially there's a top 15 percent, a bottom 15 percent, and, and everybody kind of else kind of fits in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, after being seeing Shocker Smart for about six years, I'm, I'm of the belief that he fits in that upper 15 percent. I don't know if you agree or not. I, I hope you do. But what is it that makes him special? Obviously, he's got something going out there. Well, I, I think it really, the best coaches that I've ever encountered are great communicators mm -hmm. uh, with their players. Uh, I remember when Mike Krzyzewski was building the program at Duke, back when the rules allowed it, when a player would come into Duke for a recruiting visit, he would fly home with him <laughs> so that he could have one-on-one -on -one time. And, and this is in the days when, when you recruited, you flew commercial. You know? right. <laughs> and, and so he would get on a commercial jet with the recruit, just the two of them, and talk for however long the plane flight was. And then he'd get on another commercial flight and, and come back home uh, because he wanted to establish that he, a, a feeling between himself and the player. And I think Shaka is very good at that. It, it seems like every time I talk to him, he's talking about having an individual meeting 
with this player or that player, whether it, it's, it's Briante Weber or, you know, uh, uh, a, a kid on the end of the bench. And, and of course, uh, and when you're on the end of VCU's bench, you still get playing time. And I think he's very good at establishing those relationships uh, with his players and making them understand that he cares about them, that when he yells at them, he's doing it because he wants them to be better. Uh, and I think the kids get that, and that's why they play so hard for him. Who, who's the most fascinating coach you've covered over the years? Well, I mean, the easy answer is Knight because he's such an enigma. Uh, sure. it's, it's hard to understand why someone who's that smart, uh, who does things uh, as well as he does them, uh, both on and off the court. Sure. Uh, I mean, I remember going with him to a gas station in Bloomington because he had heard that uh, this guy was giving his players free gas. And he went down there and he said, if, you, if I ever hear that you've given one of my players a pack of gum again, I, I, not only will I turn us into the NCAA, but I'll run you out of town. And, and I, he was that big a believer in the rules and doing the right things, and yet he's such a bully. Dean Smith is certainly another one because he, he won 879 basketball games, and I would say by far his most important contributions uh, to the world were off the court. Right. helping desegregate restaurants in Chapel Hill in the 50s when he was an assistant coach. Right. Uh, the, all the, the various issues that he stood up for publicly. Whether you agree or disagree with him, he stood up for him. And uh, I can't think of anybody I've ever admired more in sports than Dean Smith. Now, I understand you're, you're working on a new piece of, speaking of Dean Smith, <laughs> a, a new book right now. Yeah, I, 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 I'm doing a book on Dean, Jim Valvano, and Mike Krzyzewski and on their relationships and their rivalries and how they evolved. And, uh, I've said that I wasn't born to write this book, but I lived it <laughs> because I was covering all three of them in the 80s when they were coaching against one another down in the triangle and, and knew Mike very well, um, knew Jim very well. I actually met each of them before they even came down to the ACC when they were still at Army and Iona, mm -hmm. respectively. And I, I think I can honestly say I had as good a relationship with Dean as anybody in the media. Dean was a little bit of a Heisman guy with the media, but he was always great with me and uh, have a lot of fond memories. Now, it, People will say, well, you can't talk to Dean because of his illness, and you can't talk to Jim, obviously, since he's passed away, and that's true. But I've spent a lot of time with both their wives uh, and with people who've been close to them, and, of course, I've spent a lot of time with Krzyzewski. So it's been a fascinating experience. Have you ever thought about going, going back to the season on the brink well, with, maybe with a guy like Shaka? You know, uh, it's funny because Shaka and I talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Not in, not in his, but he asked me that question. Uh -huh. And the answer is that my life is so different now. When I did Season on the Brink, I was yeah. in my 20s. Uh, I was single. I didn't need to have a life. Um, I could just spend every night with Bob <laughs> Knight, and it was fine. I'm uh, now married, uh, remarried. I have three kids. Uh -huh. uh, so it would be a lot harder uh, logistically and for my personal life. And the other thing is, and I said this to Shaka, how do you top Bob Knight? I mean, and I don't mean in terms of being a great coach or a great guy. He's not a great guy, but I mean in terms of the storyline. Right. Uh, there are other coaches who have great stories to tell, uh, and maybe there might be one where I'll go, this particular, you know, like, for example, if a guy like Krzyzewski mm -hmm. said, this is going to be my last year, you know, yeah. I don't think he'll go out that way. But if right. that were to happen, maybe then you go down and yeah. say, the winningest coach in history, whether you sure. think he's the greatest or not, I think Wooden's the greatest, but the winningest coach in history, his last year, yeah. that might be something worth chronicling. But we'll see. Great. Well, we look forward to the new book uh, when it does come out. And, It'll be uh, out uh, starting next basketball season. Hopefully I'll be invited back here to do some VCU games and we'll get to talk about it. Well, as long as we win while you're here. Yeah, I know. That's the amazing <laughs> thing. Coaches love me when, when I do a game or come to a game and they win. And if they lose, it's my fault. Yeah. That's life. Well, John, I really appreciate, appreciate you coming down and doing an interview. And uh, thanks a lot. My pleasure.